Over defence teams in the corruption trial involving Zandi Lekumede and 21 others at the Durban High Court are objecting to the introduction of new evidence by the state's fifth witness. Well, this led to Judge Shermaine Belton to rather adjourn the matter for the day and calling all the other parties to her chambers. The state has been leading evidence of the fifth witness who took to the stand on Monday and he's a former senior Etikwini municipality official who can't be named at the stage to protect his identity. Our senior reporter, Dayson Thathia, speaks to uh, legal analyst uh, Mpumelelo Zigalala at this point, but he also joins me now, of course, to give us uh, perhaps even context as to what exactly is the status of the court case. Dayson, a very warm good morning to you. Uh, where does the case stand round, uh, run about now in terms of the latest developments coming from court? Well, Tumelo, you know that the state had re look at its strategy and, in fact, begin this week with a new thread of evidence and that was because of those fears that had arisen as a result of the home of one of the witnesses being shot at last week so that really changed the game after that there were a number of witnesses that then backed out they had fears about testifying here and certainly not exposing themselves those were municipal officials so that's why there was a, a short adjournment last year, last week which resulted in the case coming back this week. And now we're seeing uh, evidence from that senior municipal official. And that will that is expected to continue today. But that's just one part of it. On the other side of it, we've been dealing with the issue of media access and being able to try to bring what's happening in court in this very crucial case for anyone, both in Durban as well as the country, but what's been happening so far is that there have been certain snags in actually getting that done. It's one of the issues that I now want to unpack with Mpumalelo Zegalala, our legal analyst. Mr. Zegalala, thanks so, so much for joining me. I think if we had to go back to July last year, you would recall very well that there was a court battle in order to even get a camera into this court. Just at the outset, maybe if you could explain to us and explain to our viewers why that has been the case? Well, uh, you may have to look at it from two instances. Firstly, it's the members of the public, or they say the media, saying that we need to exercise our freedom. Now, Section 16 of our Constitution talks about freedom of expression, and part of it is the freedom of the media to be able to bring us the news while you are sitting at home to be updated as to what is happening within our country. For Devonites, it's, this is crucial because they want to know what was happening with the municipal funds or the funds in which we're supposed to go and assist when it comes to service delivery. At the same time, you also have the accused who may come and say, well, under Section 35, we have a right to be tried in a court which is a public platform. And part of the public platform must be taken into context of what is happening in 2023, where you do not have to go and sit in court in order to experience what is happening inside. Yeah. I should have the ability of being brought what is happening in court at home is part and parcel of the protection of my rights. So if there are going to be any threats which are taking place, come with a substantive application as the NPA and show what is the harm which is being suffered by the, 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 the broadcast which is taking place place. If you look at it from a practicality point of basis, the media doesn't have access to the witness list that is there, which is the practitioners and the court that has those, the, 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 those, those names. So how is, how is the broadcasting of the matter going to be any prejudicial to the state's case? Because their witnesses are there and they must come to court and give evidence. And that's exactly the point, because that is something that we've also been questioning, that in fact, the officials who are testifying, many of their names have already been made public. And in, in fact, I want to ask you this, how much of an impact does it have between broadcasting the, 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 the testimony here and the possible threats? Because those threats seem to have preceded any broadcasting of the witness testimony. You see, you may, may find that even if an order were to come out today saying that there must be no media access at all, the threats will still continue. The, at, at the end of the day, the people who, the person who's going to take the final decision as to who is innocent and who is guilty is the court. And that's where the evidence actually matters. So the evidence does not matter within us as members of the public. It's important for us to know what's happening because we need to see justice taking place right in front of our eyes. But where it matters the most, it, 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 it's what's going to happen in court. And if you are going to engage in certain acts which are not going to prevent that harm from taking place, then you're going to have a problem. The discussion that you should be having, though, is to say, what, what's going to happen by placing those particular witnesses in witness protection when it comes to the court and their access when they need to come and give evidence which, which roots 
inside the home to use. Let's make sure that we deal with that evidence in much, much earlier so that we're able to preserve it, place it on record to allow the adjudication of the matter to be done smooth, uh, seamlessly. So there are the type of discussions that should be having, not a discussion of, of whether media should be allowed or not. And just lastly, how do we balance the two? Because on the one hand, yes, the media can bring these relevant applications, but then at the risk of delaying the trial even further. But at the same time, it is important that the public does see this. So what do you suggest is the way forward or what, what kind of recourse do we have? Ordinarily, there would be an application that should be made by media houses to say, here we are, give us the rules. Those rules, of course, are going to take into account the rights of privacy, which is why we see in other cases that the faces are not being shown. However, we are able to hear the audio. I think that's a perfect balancing act. We are able to protect every rights that are there. Now, if you have made that order, stick to it so that you are able to provide um, that, that balancing act is, is able to continue up until the, the, the trial ends. If you are going to change it in a during that process, I'm afraid it may amount to uh, that presiding officer changing uh, their own order unilaterally in something which is not allowed by the law. Any changes that must be made must be made through an application. Every case or every part that is there must be able to make their case and the adjudication should, should then be able to follow. Thank you very much. And Pumalelo Sekelala there giving some insight into the struggles faced by journalists that have been trying to cover this trial. In fact, the latest amended order says that we are not allowed to have cell phones inside the court. They're meant to be switched off and left in our vehicles for the duration of the time in that court. And unfortunately, it means going really old school and taking out a pen and a notepad. So the struggle does continue, but so does the trial. And we will try to bring you all of those details of what the latest witness has to say on the stand when he continues his testimony. All right. And just a, perhaps a quick one, uh, uh, Dason, what time can we also expect court to start? Our court will resume after 10 o'clock today. Mm -hmm. It has been fairly efficient in that sense, save for a few delays. All right, 10 o'clock uh, this morning. Jason Tathia for us. Uh, That's when uh, court will commence. All the latest developments coming from court. Uh, of course, our senior reporter keeping a close eye for us, and we'll be sure uh, to catch up with him as soon as there are any other developments. All our thanks again to Mpumela Zigalala for speaking to my colleague, Jason Tathia.